Hello everyone. Welcome to Smart Civil Engineer YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to discuss about the most asked interview questions for a civil engineer when an engineer goes for a job as a fresher. So this is the part one of the video. Next, the videos will come as a series. Yeah, heading into the video. So what is the code book of practice for plain and reinforced concrete? It is the IS 456 2000. Second question, what is the code book of practice for general construction in steel? That is IS 800 2007. Remember, these two code books are prescribed in Indian standards. IS refers to the Indian standard there. Third one, what is the initial setting time of an ordinary Portland cement? It is 30 minutes. So it is the time taken for the cement to start setting itself. That means right from the water is mixed next till 30 minutes. That is the initial setting time of an ordinary Portland cement. So after 30 minutes, it is said that the cement starts to harden. What is the final setting time of ordinary Portland cement? It is 10 hours or 600 minutes. So after these 10 hours or 600 minutes, we can't even scratch the cement. Next, it is the mixed proportion ratio for concrete. M15 is 1 is to 2 is to 4. So 1 stands for 1 part of cement and 2 stands for 2 parts of fine aggregate and 4 that is 4 parts of coarse aggregate. Suppose if you take 1 kilogram of cement, then we have to take 1 and 2 parts, that is 2 into uh, 1 kg of cement means 2 times the volume of cement, that is 2 kilograms of fine aggregate and 4 kilograms of coarse aggregate. In the same manner, M20, that is 1 is to 1.5 is to 3, that means 1 kilogram of cement is taken, then 1.5 kilograms of fine aggregate has to be taken and 3 kilograms of coarse aggregate has to be taken. And next comes M25, that is 1 is to 1 is to 2, 1 kilogram of cement, 1 kilogram of fine aggregate and 2 kilograms of coarse aggregate. So what is the M15, M20 and M25? So these are the different mixed proportion ratios of concrete. Depending on the need, we go for M15 or M20 or M25 concrete. In general, M20 is used in the regular constructions. 15, 20 and 25 in these three stands for the characteristic compressive strength of a concrete cube tested at 28 days after proper curing. The compression test is made on a concrete cube after the 28 days of curing in water. So that value is taken as the ratio value. So what does EM refers to in M20 concrete? In the previous slide, we have gone for M15, M20 and M25. So that M refers to mix proportion or in general mix. And next comes what is the standard size of a brick? This is clay brick that is the standard size of the clay brick in general it is 190 
by 90 by 90 mm. So these days we are getting fly ash bricks and CLC blocks of different sizes, but the standard size of a clay brick is always 190 by 90 by 90 mm mostly. Next comes the water absorption for a standard brick. That is when brick is immersed in water for 24 to 48 hours. After immersion, if you remove the brick, more than 20 percentage of water must not be absorbed by the brick. If it is more than 20 percentage, it is not recommended for construction. That means the water absorption ratio must not cross 20 percentage. And next comes the laboratory tests that are made on cement to check its quality. So this can be taken in an order. There is finest test, normal consistency, initial and final setting time, specific gravity, soundness and compressive strength test on cement. So the finest test is made on every cement sample. So why we are doing finest test? Because the finer the particle or the final the cement, the more is the strength of the cement. That means that if the cement is more finer, then we can get a good quality of concrete or the good strength of a cement. So that fine, if it is passed, then we go for a normal consistency test. So why do we do normal consistency test? This test is also called as standard consistency test. So this test is made to know the standard water content that is necessary for a cement sample. So this is a trial and error test. So based on that water content, we go for initial and final setting time test. Later, we do specific gravity of cement. So the liquid we use here to find the specific gravity of cement is kerosene. And later we go for soundness test. So this soundness test is done whether the cement is able to expand or no. So after the construction due to some properties, so cement may expand of its size. Okay, it, it may shrink or it may expand. So to know that we are doing soundness test using leach atlias apparatus. And next comes the compressive strength test on cement. So wholly as a cement, we cannot directly do the test as we have done all these uh, earlier tests. So here we have to go for cement mortar mix as one is to three. One cement is to three fine aggregate. So if we mix this, we will get a mortar and the water percentage is based on the normal consistency test. There is a standard water con water percentage to add. That is, we have based on the normal consistency test. Next, we go for compressive strength test. The final values after we are get, we are getting after 28 days of the curing, the small cubes of size 70.6 mm into 70.6 mm into 70.6 mm. These are the cement compressive strength test cubes. So we have to uh, keep in curing for seven days, 14 days and 28 days. We have to test under compressive strength testing machine. And the final value of the 28th day is taken as the compressive strength of the cement and that compressive strength defines the grade of cement. Next, how do you define the grade of a cement? As discussed just now, the compressive strength at 28 days on cement mortar mold that is cured in water gives the value of grade of cement. So if we get the value of the compressive strength as 53 Newton per mm square, then we can say that 
it is a 53 grade cement and if you get as 43 it is said that it is 43 grade cement next slump cone test we have an important workability test that is made in site why the question of slump cone is usually asked is wherever we are we can carry this equipment and it is a compulsory experiment that is made even there is no laboratory facility at the site so this is one of the workability tests performed on fresh concrete so if we have produced or generated a fresh concrete the immediate test that we can perform to to know its workability or consistency is the only slump cone test so it is easily carried by any person and it, it can be easily done even under no improper supervision also. So it measures <clears throat> the consistency of fresh concrete before it sets. So if the concrete is not up to the mark or if it fails in its consistency, then we can again mix it properly with using what is less either it mixtures or water or fine aggregate or any other content we can add it at that place and we can go for it next we have three types of slums that is collapse shear and true slump so we have collapse slump so if we get the slump cone is like this so suppose if it is slump cone is like this after the removal of the slump cone the concrete suppose the concrete tested tested may fall down like this so that is a collapse next if the concrete after removing the shape of this is like this so that is shear and true slump is nothing but it is it takes the value of or it takes the shape of the slump as it is but with some slump value so in generally slump is measured from top of from top to bottom not from bottom to top suppose this is a slump cone so after this the slump is measured right from this to here like this okay so in general the slump is like this so up to here it is collapsed that is true slump so the value of this is taken as slump say some 20 mm suppose so the slump is 20 mm here okay so and generally the top diameter is 10 centimeter for a slump this is in the form of a cutted cone uh, suppose there is a cone like this the frustum of a cone can be if i remove this part so if i remove this part we get only this part in the elevation as shown here so this is the frustum of a cone that frustum of cone can be treated as a slump cone in general so the top diameter is 10 centimeter the diameter is top opening diameter is 10 centimeter and bottom diameter is 20 centimeter the height of that cone is 30 centimeter and next very important the full form of pcc that is the plain cement concrete that is a fresh concrete in general or a hardened concrete without any reinforcement in that and rcc is the reinforced cement concrete what is the use of reinforcement in a cement concrete as we know that concrete is strong in compression that means it can withstand any type of compressive loads and it is concrete is weak in tension that means it doesn't have its ability or enough strength to control or to resist its fracture in tensor so to stop that to resist that we are adding reinforcement 
for beams, for columns, for slabs, for footings, and what not. So that type of concrete is called as reinforced cement concrete. So it is the combination of reinforcement added to the concrete and it is treated as a one unique material that is a reinforced cement concrete. And this is also an important question every civil engineering student must know that is the volume of one cement bag. One cement bag weighs 50 kilograms and it in terms of cubic meter or meter cube it is 0 0.034 and in terms of cubic feet it is 1.226 cubic feet and we have for unit weight of concrete this is a standard unit weight for plain cement concrete it is 24 kilonewton per meter cube and for reinforced cement concrete it is 25 kN per meter cube. And we have FFL. This is from structural engineering point of view. That is a building or any type of high rise building or anything. We have FFL as finished floor level. And SFL as structural floor level. And SSL as structural slab level. So these are the important full forms that every student must know while they are reading a drawing. And thank you for sparing your valuable time. Let's have few more videos as in the coming parts. Thank you.